G'day, welcome to this episode. Um, it's time to finally start fixing this cow and the plenum chamber underneath. So um, a lot of work ahead, but um, this will be broken up to a couple of episodes because it's just a massive job. So I'm gonna start off with the plenum chamber and then we'll work on to the, uh, the cow panel. All right, so back in uh, episode seven, I think it was, <clears throat> I removed this um, cowl panel. Back then I was calling it the plenum. We've uh, since sorted that out. So this is the cowl. All right, I'm gonna start calling it that from now. Um, and the plenum chamber is the dish underneath, which is rotted out and has to be repaired. So as you can see here, I've been storing this up in the uh, top of the shipping container up there. So it's rusted out. I can't use it anyway. It's pretty much stuffed. Um, all the corners are eaten out. I mean, obviously got all these spot welds here that are uh, being drilled out. So it's easier just to buy a new replacement panel from Rare Spares and uh, at a cost of, I mentioned a few times, about $185 or so, around about there somewhere. Um, they're a good fit, apparently. So there's, there's a couple of different versions. You can get one for the HZs, HJs, etc., And then there's one for the WB, which is... Um, the difference being, I think they've got these uh, these window, windscreen wiper jet areas in a different area, so you need to have a hole there, um, so that which they now accommodate for. Um, once I get the panel, I'll go over it as well, uh, and then also you've got this this uh, work here that they've done these brackets, which I think come assembled. These little plastic uh, windscreen wiper outlets here um, will need to be. I think I could probably reuse them. I might resource them from rare spares. Yeah, but all in all, I mean, you can see there's been some repair work done there before as well. So, yeah, this will be a big job. It was a big job to get off. It'll be a big job to put on. Um, well, I'm a member of a WB, uh, HQ, HZ and HJ style side and Tunner forum on Facebook. And it's very interesting. One of the guys I saw uh, was posting some pictures of replacing this panel. And he was using um, Sikaflex panel glue to actually adhere this panel onto the plenum chamber, which I thought was a very interesting way to do it. Because I know that, you know, you can see here with all the amount of spot welds, etc., it's just a nightmare to, um, to get off again. And not that I want to take it off again, but you were just, just thinking, you know, if you could make it easier to um, take off in the future to potentially do any further repairs underneath or whatever, it makes a lot more sense. I know that a lot of, a lot of cars, like you've got the uh, Datsun 280Zs, just screw off their chambers, their, their, um, their cows, take them off so they can get access underneath. So I don't know why Holden have gone to such an extreme to, um, to spot weld the hell out of it. So um, I think that gluing method, it's, it's definitely got some merit and I'll be researching further into it because if I can reduce any risk of uh, getting rust contamination from the from welds inside those panels, and this panel is going to stay on just as much as, as you know, just as strong as, as welding it, then I'm sold on it. So being a, uh, a top panel, it's not going to be too much stress involved with, with any kind of structural stability or anything like that. I think that once, you, once it's on, the body roll and everything else will, will pretty much um, not affect it too much considering that that Sikaflex stuff is pretty flexible. Anyway, we'll get that to that. I'm not even going to get to that today. This will be the following episode. I'm just going to concentrate on starting to hook into that rust, which is severe rust on that um, lower plenum chamber and start cutting it out and, and fabricating those sections. So let's get into that. All right, it's easy to get ahead of yourself uh, on these builds, but um, before I start on the plenum chamber, uh, every little repair you do, you know, there's always little inconsistencies left over before you finish it entire, entirely. And um, I'm sort of leaving them and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll come fix it up when I, uh, when I, uh, later on when I've finished it all. But you should really just finish it pretty much, you know, at least 100%, almost 100%. Um, and then come back and if you, you need to tidy out one pinhole here and there, yeah, so be it. But um, I've got like 
10 pinholes here and I'm like, oh, I'll come and fix it later on. But this is just leaving an opportunity for us to start to uh, set in. So I'm gonna spot weld these, um, these little, these pinholes and I'm gonna stick a flex underneath so that it's protected and then this edge prime will be protected on top. And that way I'm not opening uh, up any risks of rust settling in. I'm also going to, uh, to sort out this little patch repair here, which um, I've finished and it's a little bit rough, but uh, yeah, once again, it's pretty much sealed from, from rust and things like that. And once I get to the new um, shed, then I'll start maybe panel beating that a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to start with doing that and then I'll move on to the plenum. Okay, just a bit of an update on this uh, panel that I did last week. Um, let's show you here. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, this uh, fold here was too rounded um, and it didn't really match the original panel. So I've just been hammer and dollying this section here from both sides, um, just with a combination of holding this dolly sort of on the edge like that and then hitting it with a flat hammer, just sort of right on the edge. And also sometimes using this just to, if you get a little, little bit of a rise and just like gently tap along there and then work from the other side and do the same thing, sort of hold the dolly on this side and then sort of eventually squeeze it in. And I found that, um, you know, that's pretty good now. I'm pretty happy with that. This is obviously a little bit of a seam joint here, but um, once I grind these back, that'll sort of even out a bit and the body filler will take care of the rest. Um, yeah, so all in all, pretty happy with that. I mean, this is pretty bashed in here and just got about, just about to weld these plug holes again because they did uh, break once I was hammering and dollying. So I'll do that and then I have to actually weld under here as well. Um, I've left that unwelded while I do all the hammer and dolly work. But to all in all, I think, you know, that for a handmade patch is pretty good. Um, and you can see, you know, it's pretty, joined up pretty well on the original panel. So with, uh, with body filler, you won't even tell. I mean, this car's got so many, this ute's got so many uh, metal patches in it now that uh, you know, one more's not gonna hurt. Um, yeah, so anyway, I will continue uh, doing that, weld the, the plug holes, and then I'm gonna start on the cow, um, cow repairs, which will be an absolute ball. All right. All right, so I've just uh, tidied up those pinholes and sprayed a bit of uh, primer on it. It's not uh, etch primer like the other one, because <clears throat> that's all I had, but that at least keep it away from the moisture. Um, I'm gonna have to put body filler and everything over it anyway, so it's gonna be sanded back as long as it's protected for now. Um, and then this section here, just uh, filled up the, the holes and things like that. Um, this little join down here, I'm not entirely happy with it at the moment, but uh, I'll get, I'll probably shape that later on with some body filler as well. Um, there's two welds, usually one here and one there, but mine actually ate away and rusted out here. So I had to weld it in the middle, which is taking that line away. But look, I'm, I'm happy with that for now. We will uh, cross that bridge when we come to it once I'm set up. Um, but for now, it's going to be the planning. So here we go. All right, so I'm just tackling this side first after going back and sick of flexing everything on the other side um, because it's so badly rusted it's all sort of melted together i don't know what layer this is here so um i'm going to have to just unpick i'm going to start by unpicking picking these spot welds here and then see if i can get this sort of top layer off um, and try and keep it a hole because i need to break it up to template it otherwise i'm not going to stand a chance of uh, putting it back on worst case scenario i'll buy this plenum chamber panel um, because so most of it's pretty good so I don't want to have to spend you know 500 bucks uh, if I don't need to um, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get around it somehow but it's going to be a lot of fiddly work so 
I'm just going to start by just yeah tr trying to get this layer off, finding out what the hell this is here, um, and then then sort of divide it up into templates and start to patch it up. All right. All right, so I managed to get a little bit further with this uh, lower section here on the plenum chamber, but um, yeah, it's really it's really hard to figure out because it's so rusted. Um, so I've just ground it back and tried to expose some of those <clears throat> some of those uh, spot welds because from what I can see, so this is a layer here. You can see it sort of folds in and then. Um, would have gone like like that and that would have been that would have rested and that is the plenum chamber panel by itself and then it rests on this there's another layer underneath which is sort of which the um, actual cowl panel sits on and then that sort of goes under there and sits on this structural Bit here which but this this layer here seems to be one piece goes all the way up um, so this is what's throwing me because it's just I just can't see too much because it's so rusted so you can sort of see there's a line here where it's been welded on uh, from the top the top cowl uh, section so what I've tried to do is break it up into some panels so this is all rusted along here and it's all rusted here you can sort of see underneath you know, it's all rusted out because it's probably dripping down underneath it and sort of been hanging around. So um, I really need to get all that cut it out. So I'm going to go wide. Um, so yeah, that'll be a panel because that way I can just snap that out, I'll cut that out, patch it, and then template that up and then put it back in. And then this would be panel two. So just sort of come in like there come up to there and then go over the lip and then fold it down. Or I might even make that as a separate little panel as well and just join them in the middle. This little here, one here, will be panel three, just nice and simple. This little ridge line, I think it's just purely just for stability to strengthen that up a bit because the plenum sits over it. The windscreen sits inside the cow ridge. Um, so there's no need to really you know, panic too much to try and get that too accurate, but you want to try and get it as uh, close as possible. And then underneath this whole area here will be a patch by itself. So this is what's throwing me. So I'm just trying to clear out this top section first without confusing myself too much. And then I'll start to patch that up. And then once they're all done, um, I can take this section out and have a look at sort of where it's sitting. From what I can see, if I bend this up, it's sitting on a ridge here, um, the ridge line underneath, which is part of the actual tub. So, you know, I can peel that off, but it's just impossible to find the spot weld, so, because there's so much pitting. Um, but yeah, if I can try and get that, and then I'll just cut it across there, then I should be right to uh, fabricate that section. This section here is pretty crucial to have it on the right angle, because that's where the the cowl panel actually sits. Um, so if possible, I don't really want to take that off, but because it's so pitted, I sort of have to. Um, anyway, so yeah, as you can see, that's a monstrous amount of work. Um, and then that's just one side. And then see, you can hear and see on the other side, you can actually see where that cowl panel goes here. It's a lot easier because it hasn't rusted so much. And then this section here is underneath, which is part of this whole sort of pressed panel. So this little ridge line, see, um, weld line, I'll just grind back and I'll probably cut that there and then make that panel, put it back on so it's not so rusted and then put that on top of it. So, um, you know, to buy this panel just for this little section here, 500 bucks, not worth it.
I've taken all that section off now, so it's all clean and ready to rebuild. Um, this section on here, as I mentioned before, was like just a mess, so I just had to drill <coughs> heaps of different holes and then just ply it off. I tried to get it in one piece because I need to get this quite accurate um, for this new section. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it sort of disintegrated a little bit. Um, yeah, so this whole area required heaps of fabrication now. Um, also down under here, I notice where the door hinges are, you see there's a little plate there. And it's got two little lips or metal lips that hold it in place. Um, because of the plenum and the cow rusting out, those little lips, if left too long, will eventually rust and that plate will fall off. And that's probably explains why one of these doors was sagging. Because this is the, you know, obviously the, the screws where the door sits and you can adjust this up and down. But if those little lips are missing, then this will drop down and the whole door will start to lower down. So that is... Um, that's probably one of the reasons that when your door starts sagging, it means that you've got pretty bad rust here. I mean, this this cow rust pretty much accounts for all the issues. Once you once you start to get saggy doors, and you know your windscreen starts cracking, and um, you got rust in the floor, and water coming through, and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty much this is the culprit. You know, so this is why it's such a hard piece to um, to fix. Um, but it's a very important part to fix because it can lead to so many more issues if you just don't let it, if you let it go. So um, anyway, yeah, so as, as per usual, you find out stuff as you go along. So I'm going to, uh, this section here was, as I was saying, was sort of a folded section over the top of another lip here. Um, and so I've got to sort of mould that in, put some deoxid on here. I'm going to start fabricating little sections here just to give it a bit of strength. And then I'll start uh, fabricating that first first panel, which is this. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I just wanted to have a quick chat about uh, something that um, one of the tools that I've been using to do all this uh, sheet metal work. Um, when I first started, I was using those fiber discs on an angle grinder, and I found that they were a little bit too. I found that they were a little bit too sort of awkward, cumbersome, trying to get into tight areas. So that's what I upgraded to this air tool, which had a I think it's a 76 mil in diameter uh, disc. And these fiber discs are around about one mil thick and they're good but they just wear through quite fast and they're three dollars fifty each so so one of one of the uh, businesses that i do is uh concrete diamond blades and i sort of as i was doing it i was racking my brain there must be a better way to cut sheet metal than to use these fiber discs all the time and have to cha constantly change them and you know buy them and all that kind of stuff and sometimes bunnings and have tools are out of stock Anyway, so yeah, I decided to get in contact with the manufacturers that um, do my blades and uh, develop a little sheet metal cutter. Um, I'm going to call it the Metal X and yeah, it works really well. I've gone through a couple of renditions of it um, and this is the refined version. So it's got around about 30 to uh, 40 grit diamond on it, a high quality diamond, which is sintered to the the actual blades are SK5 rated steel, which is like a, 
Um, this is the equivalent steel of a, a tactical knife. Um, got some air holes in there. And uh, yeah, so this, the diamond's sintered on the edge and on the, on the, um, around the sides of the blade. And what it does is it allows you to get a reasonable similar cut to a fiber disc, um, but it doesn't wear out. So I can get the equivalent of say, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't done full, full testing on it yet, but I mean, I've had this, this on for weeks now and it hasn't even worn out the diamond. So um, it's really good. It doesn't kick the oldest, the older one that I did, uh, that I, the older prototype had a thicker and coarser diamond and it was quite a little bit wider. So sometimes you could grab the metal and kick a bit and uh, it was burring up the metal as well, so it was more filing. But so reduced it in uh, diameter. So it's 1.2 mil uh, steel core, and then the diamond just, you know, um, raises it to around about 1.5 mil. So it's a slightly bit thicker than the fiber disc, but um, because I don't have to change them all the time, and you know, I get a lot more cuts out of this, in the long run, this will be more cost effective. So I'm gonna get these produced. Um, I think they're a great little disc. Um, and it's gonna save me heaps of time and heaps of money in the long run. So there you go. All right, so that's the, uh, the first patch um, laid in position. So pretty happy with it. This section, the lip there that uh, folds over, that's gonna be the tricky part because that sort of determines the height and of where the actual cowl panel will be sitting. So, you know, uh, at the moment, I've sort of got it roughly similar to the old one. So it dips in there a little bit and then it'll be spot welded onto those two sections there. Um, it's got a little riser there to blends into that uh, window frame, um, which I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, I did a combination of um, hammering on the, just around this section here. And then what that does is when you hammer on the top, it actually makes the steel rise upwards. So instead of going, flipping it over and then trying to, hit it from below um, and create that sort of that uh, concave shape there yeah you let the uh, let the heat and the friction of the, of the hammering do the do the work for you and hit it just on the edge of where you want the steel to rise and that creates that nice curve for you um, same thing here I sort of did it along there and then I got a steel rod and sort of bashed it in there as well to try and get that lip um, you're never going to see this so it's not you know, important to look nice or anything. It's just structural. And um, I noticed when I did cut this, this sagged down a little bit. So I've got to make sure that I measure the distance from the top of here to here and compare it to over there to so that we're not having a slope. I think it dropped by about a centimeter, so it's under tension. Um, so yeah, once, in a, once I've got that in position, then I can start to really just jigsaw the rest of it up. Um, put this section here, because that overlaps. And this little section, this little bridge section here, and then that section there, and then, then we should be sorted. All right, panel two, done. Just crudely placed there, a couple of magnets. <clears throat> uh, there is a slight lip around here, which I'm gonna have to fabricate in because that's gonna stop the liquid getting in to the cab, so it's quite important. Um, and also that holds the heat event uh, in there as well, so that, that rib would also help in aid to, to have that uh, heat event sitting there. Um, but yeah, so far that's just tedious, but uh, it's coming together. Um, <clears throat> so that was the original part. You can see that it was eaten in right at the back there. So I decided to go right up and, <coughs> and make the whole thing again. Um, so that's two down, uh, two to go. So um, yeah, that's all I can do today. So I'm going to have to split that up and, um, and come back next week and, and uh, finish her off. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all in all, it's a massive job. And I don't really, I'm not really looking forward to starting on the other side after I do this side. So um, yeah, it's just a monstrous amount of work. All right, so unfortunately, that's all I've got time for this episode. So, uh, yeah, made a bit of a dint in it. We've, um, managed to get the whole thing off, uh, clean it up, examine what's uh, the damage underneath, and um, found out a little bit about that door hinge along the way, so I learned something. 
Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it's progressing. There's going to be a little bit of measuring to try and make sure that the cow, uh, the sunken cow, when it uh, when I cut it, actually dropped a bit. Make sure that that's uh, aligned when I finally weld it. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So um, we'll just keep pushing forward. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode.